Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to look at how to determine the mass of a star in a different way. In this case, we're going to look at it in terms of a binary star system. So let's say we have two stars, and this is the mass m1 of the small star, and there's the mass m2 of the big star. And yes, the small star, we always think of the small object uh, revolving around the big object, but really what's happening is that they're both revolving around the center of mass. So let's say this is the center of mass of the two star systems. A1 is the distance from the small star to the center mass, and A2 is the distance from the large star, star to the end mass. And A here is the distance between the two stars, which is what we call the semi-major axis of the, of the orbit of the small star around the big star. And that will always remain the same, unless, of course, it's an elliptical orbit, and there'll be some small changes. What we can say is, based upon the laws of physics and the center mass and the mass of the objects, that A1, the distance from the small star to the center mass, is equal to the total distance A times the ratio of the mass of the other star divided by the sum of the two masses. That makes sense because the larger the other star is, the farther that the small star will be away from the center mass. So that does make sense. Now also we can go to Kepler's third law and we realize that the period of the orbit squared divided by the distance between the two objects cubed is equal to a constant. That was Kepler's third law. And when Newton came along, he actually took the laws of gravity and included the additional constant, the gravitational constant g, and doing some mathematics, he was able to prove that the sum of the two masses is equal to a cubed divided by p squared. And as long as we express the distance between the stars in astronomical units and the period in years, then the answer will come out in solar masses. If we use the original equation from Newton, then of course we have to put mass in kilograms, period in seconds, and A in meters, and then we'll get the same result. That's why we need these other constants there to make that come out. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to write this equation slightly different. First, we're going to bring this to the denominator, so we can write this as the total distance between the two divided by the inverse, because if we divide by this number, we have to take the inverse of that, so we have m2 plus m1. I'm going to reverse the 2 right here and divide by m2. So that's the exact same equation, except we took this and put it in the denominator, which means we have to turn it flip it over. Now we can divide m2 into the numerator here. So this can be written as a divided by the quantity 1 plus m1 divided by m2. Like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply this times this. So now we have a1 times the quantity 1 plus m1 over m2. That equals a. And then if we multiply this through, or actually a better thing to do would be to go ahead and take the a1 and bring it down here. Let's do that next. So now we can say that we have 1 plus m1 over m2 is equal to a divided by a1. And finally, when we bring the 1 across, now we have an equation that tells us that the ratio of m1 divided by m2 is equal to a divided by a1 minus 1. Now, why did we do that? Well, first of all, over here we had an equation that told us that the sum of the two masses in a binary star system is always equal to a cubed divided by p squared. The distance between them cubed in astronomical units divided by the period that the small star takes to go around the large star in years. We also found out that the ratio of the masses m1 divided by m2 is equal to the total distance between them divided by the distance from the small object, the small star, to the center mass, minus 1. Now we have two equations. We have this equation and we have this equation. Together, we should be able to solve for both m1 and m2. This is how astronomers determine the mass of two stars in a binary star system. What they have to do, of course, is they have to measure the distance between the two stars, and they, that's usually done over years of observations as they see these two stars revolving around the center mass. They determine this distance, then they determine the location of the center mass and how big this distance is right here relative to the total distance. Then they measure how long it takes for them to make one complete orbit, and knowing the distance between the objects, they know the period, and they know the distance from there to there, center mass, they can then take those two equations simultaneously and solve for the two masses of the two stars in the binary star system. And that's how we can 
get fairly accurate measurements of the masses. Again, it all depends upon how accurately we can measure the distance between the two stars, how accurately we measure the distance from the center mass to the small star. Usually we like to take the largest distance because the larger the distance, the easier it is to measure. And then just simply measure how long it takes to make one complete orbit, and then we'll be able to figure out the masses. If you want to know how that's done, in the next video, I'll do an example of how to actually calculate the masses of two stars in the binary star system. And that's how we do that.